I can't use this tubing bender without having it mounted on some sort of a cart or some sort of a stand. Personally, I like to put tools like this on casters because I think that being able to have the workflow where you can roll your tooling into your workspace and then roll it back out to the sides of the shop is just, it's very convenient and it's a great way to make it to where I have like this one work area and the tools that I need go in and out, but I don't have to move the work around the shop too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by building a couple of carts. I've got a cart for a mini lathe that I'm gonna be using on a future project. And then I need to build a cart for this bender so that we can test it out and see what kinds of you know upgrades or downgrades we have with this new swag off-road tubing bender. I have had this JD Square Bender for like 10 years, at least 10 years. And I bought it used on Craigslist and it was part of the way put together with like the swag kit and whatnot. And then I just added some little upgrades here and there just to make it a little bit easier to store stuff. But after using this for so long, I've came up with a whole lot of ideas of how to improve the next stand. And actually now that I got this tack together, we're gonna lose that because I wanna use a whole bunch of this three quarter inch rod to hold a bunch of the dies. Hey oh, the thing's about to fall. Um, and hold it to hold a bunch of the dies and stuff um, on the sides of this stand. So I'm gonna build this very simple, but I'm gonna try to build it as like the most efficient use um, of space as I can. So I don't basically have everything just piled up on the bottom of the stand. If you're watching this and you're thinking about getting a tube bender, I highly recommend that you pre-bend a bunch of little parts and pieces, little short sections of tube that are at like a 90 degree angle, a 45, you know, a 20, something around in there because it makes it so much easier when you're fabricating these different projects to just hold a 45 and see how close of an angle that is. And it helps you visualize the different things that you're building as you're going along. Anyway, when it comes to storing that stuff, it gets a little messy and before everything was just the bottom of my cart. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all the parts that are associated with these different size dies up off the bottom of the cart and then the only stuff that's gonna remain is gonna be these random chunks that I use whenever I'm fabricating just to help me visualize the different angles that I'm gonna need in order for it to look right when I'm building this stuff. I would guess there's like five, maybe even six companies that are making benders of this style. I mean, you can see some huge similarities here, right? But when you go and you start to peek around, some of them are like a direct replica of this JD Square bender. And even though this Swag Off Road bender is the same style, as soon as I started to assemble it, as someone who's put like miles of tube through the JD Square, there are some differences that I really, really appreciate. And this is just, this is how Swag Off-Road does everything. They, they, they take something that exists and they add features to it or they'll like sell you parts to make your Harbor Freight fill in the blank work better. And this certainly feels that way. First off, it looks so nice and clean and that's because it doesn't have these external springs. Those external springs have never been a problem for me, but I can imagine that if you're a guy that likes to, you know, drink on the weekends with your buddies, bend some tube, build some bumpers, one of your friends might be leaning up against this whenever you retract it and the external springs could be some somewhat of a liability or if you have little kids or something like that. This is, this return spring is like internal and it's sleeved to where like there's no way it's gonna hurt you, which I, I really I really appreciate that. But on top of that, there's these little ergonomic differences that it's just so swag off road to give me a place to put my dowels because that's something that has always bothered me about the swag. So pretty early on, I realized that this is an issue. I didn't want to have to always like bring a cart alongside of it. So I built this little pedestal so that I had a place to put these dowels because as you're working and using the equipment, 
it's nice to have a place to stow that stuff. So the fact that Swag just went ahead and gave us a place to put these, I love that. Those little details mean a lot to me. On top of that, <laughs> let's talk about something that I think is ridiculous. Look at the size of this dowel from Swag Off-Road and look at the size of this dowel from JD Square. This is wild. Um, I don't know what this is, what size tube this is rated to bend, but I imagine you could go pretty crazy. Most of what I've put through this machine over the last, you know, almost 10 years is 120 wall. And I've had zero issues with the dowels, zero issues with these holes stretching, any of that. It has lasted just fine. So when you're talking about a part that's this big and beefy, I think that we're talking about a lifetime machine and that's what a lot of us are trying to invest in when we're buying a bender. These little details make a giant difference. If you want it to last, you know, 30 or 40 years, do you want to like give it to your kids whenever they get old enough? This is, when you have parts this beefy, I think it's very likely that you're gonna be able to do that. Now, on top of that, the frame thickness itself is also larger. This is three quarters of an inch, and this is half an inch. So 50% 50, 50 larger frame. Again, I've had zero issues with that thinner frame, but I've also only bent 120 wall. I'd be curious if you could bend quarter inch in this because it's it certainly seems like it's sized to be able to do that. On top of that, we've got a couple other things that I noticed. One, it has these bronze bushings, which are really tight right now. So it's gonna be hard for me to pull this out and show you. But whenever you're doing a die change on the JD Square, the body and this swing arm like separate as soon as you pull that dowel out. And then whenever you're trying to put the new die in there, you've got to like line everything back up. Well, because this has a bronze bushing that go, it floats through both pieces, it makes it to where I'm gonna be able to pull this dowel in and out without those separating, which I think is a huge deal when it comes to just workflow. If you're out on a Saturday, you've got just the right amount of caffeine, you know, you're just blasting through projects, it's nice to not have to mess around and take that like extra 30 seconds to a minute and a half of trying to line things back up. It's frustrating, it gets in the way, and whenever you have these tiny improvements like this, overall that makes a huge difference in my experience. One last thing that stuck out to me right away is I like this like, what would you call it? It's just, it's a dial, right? But like the pointer part of the dial is so nice and precise, whereas the dial for this is like, it's like a piece of welding wire that you just like bend and contort. This is like a really beautiful, very well machined piece. And on top of that, the wheel itself, this is just paint on a piece of steel. And this is actually like machined down into it. Um, etched, I guess you would, you would say. This is like etched into it and then filled with paint. Now when we're talking about something that we want to last 30 and 40 years, what is this paint gonna look like? Right now it doesn't look bad, right? But it's got dings and nicks and whatnot. And when you have something that's literally etched down into the metal, it's gonna make it last so much longer and be clearly visible for so much longer. So there's some things that I really appreciate on the small updates that they've done with this style machine. I'm ready to throw a piece of scrap in this thing and make our first bend, but before we can do that, I need to make sure these dies are in alignment. And this doesn't take any special equipment, just an eyeball. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread this bolt in or out just to make it to where we can raise or lower this die. Then we're gonna lock the jam nut in place and we're ready to rock and roll. We're gonna put a piece of tube in here and now we need to set the degree wheel. And this part is very non-scientific. What I usually do is I just slowly put tension on the tube and I will wiggle it up and down just to see like if it's loose in there still. Once it is no longer loose and it's nice and firm, you can tell that the machine is about to bend the piece. Right when it gets to that point, all you do is loosen up a knob that's on the bottom of the degree wheel, slide it to where it indicates zero, tighten it back up, and now we're ready to bend. The first piece I'm gonna bend is gonna be to a 45, and I highly recommend that you bend past whatever you need by like two or three degrees, because there's gonna be a little bit of spring back, so we're gonna bend to a 48 in order to make a 45 degree bend, and then it's just as simple as pulling it out, admiring your work, and then attaching the piece to whatever it is that you're building. Now that I've made my first bend with this equipment, we've made sure that everything works. I'm gonna paint the stand. I'm gonna get everything ready for the next step, which is gonna be pre-bend a whole bunch of little sections to make it to where it's just so much easier to fabricate stuff in the future whenever you're using two. Now that I've got a whole bunch of these pre-bent sections done, I want to do a stinger. And believe it or not, 
things like stingers are not a bad way to make money on a side hustle. You can take like three foot, four foot chunk scrap pieces of material, you can bend it into a stinger and you can throw it on eBay. People buy this stuff all the time, but this will be, I don't know, usually like 120 degrees is a pretty decent stinger. So we'll bend this to a 120 and we'll see what it looks like. There's 120 on the nose and we've got a mini stinger here. So you can see where you could just sell a little chunk like this and a guy could use it to weld a stinger on the front of the rock crawler. Now that I've ran some tube through this, I wanna see, oh yeah, that's what I was thinking was gonna happen. So we ran a little bit of tube through this and now it's way easier to get this pin out if we wanted to change dies. And as you can see, the, this arm doesn't disconnect from the main body because of these brass bushings, which in my opinion is so brilliant. So you could see where this would make, be so much easier to do a die change since you don't have to like reline those up. Whereas with the JD square, every time I would change a die, I would have to like, I mean, sometimes you just like hit this a little bit and then like tweak some things around and then hit tap it with a hammer, it'll go in. But this just goes right in, which I really, really like. If you're gonna be at Easter Jeep Safari this year, 2023, and you wanna come hang out, I'm gonna be at the Onyx Off-Road booth on Friday the 7th from like noon to two. So if you wanna come, say hi, hang out, we can talk about rigs, we can talk about whatever you want. You can ask me more questions about this bender. Um, come and see me. That's pretty much all we need to do for a video on a bender in my opinion. Now what I need to do is just use the crap out of it. We've got a whole bunch of tube work to do on this. We have another build that we're gonna throw into the mix for Onyx Off-Road. It's a Land Cruiser, uh, spoiler alert. And so we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of tube work on that. So if you wanna see more you know, reviews, more impressions of this machine as we use it, just keep watching the content. I've got a whole bunch of build stuff that's gonna to continue to roll out this year. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.